This is fairly typical calcite. It's the kind of brownish, fuzzy looking grains uh, towards the center. Um, it has variable relief. I'll explain what that is um, a little bit later. Uh, but it has really characteristic interference colors. They're super, super high. Um, so you get these pastels. Um, sometimes it can even look gray. Um, and it almost has that um, bird's eye extinction uh, characteristic too. This is what I was talking about with variable relief. That one grain in the middle, you'll notice it gets darker, like it's dark there, and it's lighter, and it's darker there. That's variable relief. It also has twins that you can see come and go. Those are those little diagonal bands that are running through that center grain. Um, and those can come and go. That's a, a variable relief feature as well. So now I want to show you variable relief with um, two different grains. Um, there's a grain on the right, which um, will have different relief than the grain on the left. And I just want you to follow those two grains as I rotate the stage. Basically, you'll see that the grain boundary on one grain will be dark when the other one is light. And then after I rotate the stage 90 degrees, then they'll switch. So the first one will be light and the second one will then be dark. Okay, here we go. Cool, huh? Okay, in plain polarized light, some of this carbonate is a little subtle. Um, and I think it's either anchorite, or may, might be dolomite, because it weathers red. Calcite usually doesn't have that red weathering on it. Um, but when you cross the polars, then you can see there's quite a lot of carbonate in this uh, field of view uh, because of the brilliant uh, but pastel uh, interference colors. This is another large crystal of um, probably anchorite in a graphitic schist. Um, this one has super high interference colors. When you cross the polars, they're so pale that they almost look like first order grays. Um, but if you really go in and, and look at this in, um, at higher magnification, then you'd see it. it is a very, very pastel, super high interference colors. And now I'm going to show you an interference figure for uh, calcite. So I chose a grain that has very low interference colors. It may not seem that way, but this is low for calcite. So I go to high magnification, and I put in the substage condenser, and I put in the Bertrand lens, and what you're looking at is it's, it's an off-center uh, optic axis. Um, calcite is uniaxial, so you get that cross, and it has super high differences in refractive index, so that's why you see so uh, many rings there. If I put in the quarter wave plate, you'll see that northeastern quadrant is orange, and that means it's uniaxial negative. It's almost impossible to get a centered optic axis figure on calcite, but that one was pretty close. Now, if you think about how interference relates to the indices of refraction, then you might predict that when the calcite is rotated to extinction in cross polars, it should have either the highest or the lowest relief. So let's just check that. We'll, we'll uh, cross the polars, we'll rotate it until they're dark, and then we'll uncross the polars and we'll look at their relative relief. Are they at their highest or lowest? Okay, cross the polars. Rotate it so they're pretty much at extinction. Okay, right is low and left is high. Now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, so now it's uh, they're almost extinct. Left is low and right is high. It works. <laughs>